Welcome back to the Caregiver Minute, where every weekday family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. Today I want to talk to you about the most famous case in all of the world of neuroscience, the case of Henry Malaisen. And in the thousands of articles that talk about him, he's generally referred to as H.M. Now, when Henry was a 10-year-old boy, he fell off his bicycle and sustained a serious head injury. And whether it was because of that or because of a family history of epilepsy, he started having epileptic seizures. And for the next 17 years, his life was miserable. He had seizures on a regular basis. These seizures originated in a part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is deep in the limbic brain, just above the brain stem. We're going to talk more about the hippocampus because scientists learned some very interesting things about how it functions and what it does for our brains through the case of H.M. Well, by the time he was 27, it was 1953. And doctors in those days still performed lobotomies and other surgeries that actually altered the structure of the brain to try to improve mental health or try to reduce symptoms of brain-related disorders like epilepsy. Well, since Henry's seizures originated in the hippocampus, a doctor in 1953 removed the hippocampi on both sides of the brain. Now, the good news is that his seizures basically stopped and he still had his motor skills and he was able to communicate effectively and he maintained his great personality. The flip side though, the thing that he traded those seizures for is that he couldn't make any new memories. And for the next few decades, until he died in his early 80s, Henry read the same magazines. He wasn't able to assimilate new words that entered the lexicon, words like laptop or emoji, Those were things that he never could remember. He could remember a number if he repeated it over and over and over and over, and as soon as he quit repeating it, he could no longer remember that number. The researchers who worked with him and studied him for decades were people that he never remembered, even decades later. That sounds a lot like Alzheimer's disease, doesn't it? Well, it turns out Alzheimer's disease generally affects the hippocampus first. The major job of the hippocampus is to consolidate memories and to help us take sensory experience and connect everything together and decide what should be kept and what should be discarded. And it turns out most of our experiences don't get remembered. Most people can only recall vivid details of five to eight days in the last year. And when you go several years out, the amount that people remember degrades even further. Now, where are memories stored? Well, they're stored all over the brain. Different parts of memories are stored in the areas where they were first activated. So you might have a memory of going to the beach and what the sand felt like under your toes. And there are certain sensory parts of the brain that store those kinds of memories. Or you might have a memory of being at a dance and your motor cortex stores some of that memory. So there's not just one area where things get stored, but when the memory control tower, the hippocampus, gets impaired, either because somebody does a lobotomy like they did in Henry's case, or because Alzheimer's disease is destroying it, things just don't work the same, and new memories don't get stored. Now, interestingly, in the case of Henry, over time when he was asked to do very difficult tasks, things like drawing a picture by looking in a mirror, which is not easy for anybody. He actually got faster at doing those things over time. There were certain parts of his brain that were a little bit more moldable and able to learn those skills over time. You might call it muscle memory or procedural memory. The fact that that can stay intact explains why some people move into a new setting, whether it's a new home their family moves to or a new memory care community or any other new place, After a few weeks, people tend to learn where their room is. I once served a lady in a memory care community who lived there for over six years, and every day felt like a new day to her. She thought she was in a hotel, and she would sit at the dining room table and talk about how she had just gotten there, she was excited to be there, but she could get up and leave the table and go around the corner to exactly where her room was, and she never missed it. It was fascinating to watch the fact that she couldn't remember that she had been there for years, 
but she could remember, at least procedurally, how to get to her room. I think all of this serves to illustrate just how complex memory is. And since many of us as family and professional caregivers are serving people whose memories are impaired, the more we understand about it and how it works, the better off we are. So the next time you see someone who can't remember things for more than a few moments, I hope you'll remember that their hippocampus just isn't working as well as it should. I hope that gives you some insight, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another episode of the Caregiver Minute.